The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. First canto, second chapter, text number 10, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 21st of October, 1972, in Vrindavan, India. Kamasanendriya Priti Lava Jivita Javata Jiva Satapta Jignasa Nath Jassi Hakarma Ji. So, we are discussing Dharma Artha Kam Moksha. So, we have already discussed the religiosity does not mean to gain, material gain. Generally people take to religiosity for material gain. We have already discussed that people go to the church, God give us our daily bread. Or even in temple they go to ask something, material gain. But actually religiosity is not meant for that purpose. Religiosity meant for dharmasya apabargas, to enter into life of religiosity means to get out of the threefold miserable condition of life, apabarga. So then dharma or thought Money also we want. Arthasa dharma ikantasa no kamo labhaya smitaha. We want money, that's all right. But not for satisfaction of our lusty desires. Money has got its use. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we get money also. But we are spending for spreading Krishna consciousness. Our need is very great. So you need money. And you are getting money also. In Europe, in America, the process of getting money is not like here. That I go to any gentleman, give us some donation. That is not possible. You cannot enter even one's house without introduction. Then you are trace person. If you enter anyone's house without permission, he can kill you. This is the law. And every door there is signboard, beware of the dogs. <laughs> so it is not possible to go and beg, Sadiva something. But fortunately we have published books, about twenty books, four hundred pages each. And we are going on publishing. By Krishna's grace we are selling books daily twenty-five thousand rupees. Therefore you are able to spend seven lakhs of rupees per month. So Krishna gives. My Guru Maharaj always used to say that why should you go and flatter? You should speak plain truth without any flattering. Money will come. That was his conviction. And so it is experience. You have got very, very heavy expenditure. But all this money collected, they are not meant for India Preeti, not for sense categories. That is the significance. If you want money for sense gratification, then according to our destiny we shall get. Not more than that. 
Nobody can get more. Therefore, Bhagavad says, Tashayvaheta prajateta kovita nalabhate dat bhamatam upard tallabhate dukha vadannata sukham kalena sarvatra gubhira namasa. So far our sense gratification is concerned, we cannot get money more than what we are destined to get. Otherwise, why there are so many people born with silver spoon in their mouth and somebody is born poor and is not getting even two times food, working very hard day and night. So there is a destiny. Destiny we cannot improve. That is already settled up. But you can improve your Krishna consciousness. That chance is there. Therefore, Bhagavad says, Tasaiva heta prajati the Kovita. Those who are learned, those who are intelligent, they should devote the light for developing Krishna consciousness. The Krishna consciousness is there in everyone's heart, dormantly. Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti. Sadha Kohu no. Savanadi Suddha Chitte Karayu. Our love for Krishna is there already. But it is covered. It is covered. By the more some material nature, it is covered. So this Krishna consciousness movement is nothing but discovering Krishna consciousness. It is already there. But we are giving chance to the people for hearing about Krishna. That's all. All these European, American boys and girls have joined. They have simply been given the chance of hearing. Sita Dharpana Mahajana. Actually, if the people are given chance to hear this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Parang Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana, then gradually the dirty things within his heart becomes clear and he can understand what is Krishna. This is the possible. We do not ask anybody that you become Hindu or you become so and so. We simply ask, please come and chant with us. This is our problem. I began my chanting in New York in a park, Tompkinson Square. Those who are old students, here is Ochitanand is one of the old students. He first of all came and danced. He and Brahmananda. That is the beginning. He knows what was the being. I was sitting underneath the tree like this and no cold. It was some dugdubi. And I was playing on it from two to five, three hours chanting, and these young boys and girls with their dogs, with their children, they began to dance. Yes, that was the beginning. Gradually they became student. Here is, uh, where is our Hayagiriva Prabhu? Yes. He is Professor Howard Wheeler. He also met me on the street. And before that, he came to India to search out a guru, but he could not find out a guru. He returned back. Then when I was going on a street, he found me and he began to join. In this way we develop. First of all in New York, then San Francisco, then Montreal. So now we have got more than 100 branches all over the world. So simply by this chanting, and we are known as Hare Krishna people. Wherever we go, people say, here are the Hare Krishna people. They respect because we follow strictly the four principles, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, 
and no meat eaten. They respect. Uh, they become surprised. How we can have heart? So here it is stated, Kamasan envy of people. So long we have this body, we have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to enjoy senses, and we have to deface. Hahara nidra bhai mantra. These are bodily necessities of life and they are called kama. So kama is allowed. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, dharma abhiruddha kama smi, which is not against the religious principles, that sort of kama is allowed. But not for sense activities. You can marry, you can be a children, that's all right, but you cannot enjoy sex for enjoyment, for simply enjoyment. No, that is not allowed. You eat, you sleep, you have sex life, you defend. Nothing is forbidden in the śāstra. But you must know the aim of your life. The aim of your life is tattva jīgyāsā. You should not forget that. Therefore, the Vedic system is so organized that people may satisfy the bodily necessities of life, at the same time he may progress in Krishna consciousness or understanding the absolute truth. That is Vedic system. Not one-sided. There is sufficient concession for our sense gratification, but we should not forget our real business of life, athāta brahma jīgyāsā. This brahma jīgyāsā is explained here as tattva jīgyāsā, the same thing. Jīvaśya tattva jīgyāsā. This human life, athāta brahma jīgyāsā means this human life is made for inquiring about the absolute truth. Just like Sanatana Goswami, he inquired from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ke ami kyano more jāpe tāpatra. Who am I? This is also Brahma Jīgyāsa. Because I am part and parcel of Brahma, the absolute truth, so I must know myself. So that is the beginning of Brahma Jīgyāsa. Just like Bhagavad Gita begins, Krishna is teaching Arjuna that you are not this body, you are Brahma. Dehinasmin jathādi komāra jovanam jara. Asmin deh, in this body, there is the proprietor of the body. So that is the beginning of Brahma Jīgyāsā. Who am I? Kiyāmi. And without knowing myself, I cannot understand what is Krishna. If I, without knowing myself, I try to understand Krishna, then I shall misunderstand. Abhajananti mana murha mana I shall consider that he is also a man like me, maybe a bitter man or stronger man or richer man, that's all. Because they have no conception of the spiritual identity of self, therefore they misunderstand Krishna as ordinary man. So we cannot understand Brahma or God or Parabrahma, a super soul, without understanding the nature of myself. This is called tattva jīgyāsa. So jīvasa tattva jīgyāsa. We should work. Everyone is working. But they are working for sense gratification, especially in the Western countries. Not only Western countries, Eastern, everywhere. Their aim is how to satisfy or gratify the senses more and more. This is their aim. But that is not the aim of life. The aim of life, especially in the human form of life, we are 
coming to this human form of life through the evolutionary process, gradual evolutionary process of eight million four hundred thousand species of life, and this is the opportunity to understand what I am, what is God, and what is our relationship. If we miss this opportunity, then we are committing suicide. Again, we are going back in the cycle of birth and death, and we do not know when again we shall come to this form of human body. So we should not misuse this human form of body. Therefore, Narottamda Thakur sings, Hari Hari Bhīphale Janama Gaur. Manusya Janama Paiya Radha Krishna Nābhajiya Janiya Suniya Bhishokhaya. Knowingly I am drinking poison. I have heard that this life is meant for understanding the Absolute Truth, but I am spoiling my life in the business of sense gratification. So therefore I am drinking poison knowingly, just like somebody takes poison knowingly that I, I must die, but he wants to end. So that is not our aim of life. We should probably utilize the opportunity given by nature, given by God. That is the choir. So here is the opportunity. Krishna is there. Krishna is speaking. Not that Krishna is not present. Krishna is present by His words. Krishna is absolute. There is no difference between Krishna and His words. The Bhagavad-gītā as it is, they are the words of Krishna. When you read Bhagavad-gītā, you should know that you are talking with Krishna directly. Krishna katha, Chaitanya Mahapuru, they are for advices. Jare dakho tare kaho Krishna upadesh. Krishna upadesh, Krishna katha. This should be spread all over the world. My Guru Maharaj used to say that I don't find any scarcity within this world except Krishna consciousness. Actually that is the fact. There is no scarcity all over the world. In India there may be scarcity, but outside India still there are so much vacant places, especially in Africa, in America, in Australia, in New Zealand, that ten times of the population of the whole world can be fed still. There is so much potency of producing food, food grains, milk and other things. Profusely. In America they throw out so many grains and vegetables drill. It is simply mismanagement. Otherwise there is no question of scarcity or poverty. There is no question. It is simply propaganda. Because they cannot manage the foolish people, the present, the population has increased and the food stuff is not properly supplied. Food stuff is always sufficient, but when there are demands, the supply is restricted by nature. That we get information from Prithu Maharaj's history. When there was scarcity, Prithu Maharaj wanted to kill the earthly god or prithi, but she replied that I have restricted supply on account of demons because they are not uh, actually executing the purpose of life, Krishna consciousness, therefore I have restricted. So the more people become non-Krishna conscious, materially conscious, the more there will be restriction of foodstuff. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the twelfth canto, it is stated that at the end of Kali Yuga there will be no grain supply. Wheat, rice, and milk, and sugar will not be available. Now it is available still, because still people are little Krishna conscious for them only, but gradually 
the things will deteriorate so much so that almost all supplies will be stopped. So the fact is that we do not require to endeavor for finding out food. The food is already there. Jivasa tattva jiggasa. We should sit down tightly, depending on Krishna, that we have already explained that this Krishna consciousness moment is going on. We have got heavy expenditure, but Krishna is supplied. This is a fact. None of our boys and girls, they go to office or to factory or they are uh, in Los Angeles or neighborhood men, they are very envious. They say, how you maintain such huge establishment and you do not work. They cannot dream that without working one can eat. So here the fact, jīvaśya tattva jīgñāsā nārtha jāstīva karma vi. It is not that you have to work very hard. That everywhere in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the instruction. In one place in the fifth chapter of fifth canto, while Vishabdev was instructing his boys, he also said, Nahang Nayana Deha Deho Bhajanga Niloke Kastana Kamara Arhati Vidhu Bhujangaji. This human form of body is not meant for working hard like the dogs and the hogs, for simply for sense gratification. It is meant for tapo vidvam putraka jena The human life is meant for tapasya, self-realization, tattva jiggyasa. That is the basic principle of Vedic civilization. In the Vedic and Mahabharata, we don't find there is any industrial development or trade without development? No, nothing like that. Why Mahabharata? Even two hundred years ago, before the British advent, there was no industry all over the India. And they are happy. So it is not that simply by increasing your fruitive activities, karma bhi, you can become happy. No, that is not possible. If you simply restrict yourself for life, inquiring about the absolute truth, then you will be happy. Jiva satatta jiggasa. That is the only business of the human form of life, and not working hard like asses and cows, saiva gokhara. These examples are there, and I was giving the example while coming. That this ass, as one ass was going, so the ass, he can eat grass anywhere. There are so many grasses. But he is thinking that unless I work very hard, the washer man will not give me grass. This is ass intelligence. Everything is there. Why ass? There are elephants. In Africa there are millions of elephants. They are eating at the at one time, at least eighty-two pounds, but they are supplied food. So there is no question on. This is all uh, political propaganda. There is no food, there is increase of population, nothing. Everything Krishna can provide. Eko bhunam vidudhati kama nitya nityanam chitana chitanana. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme, nitya, eternal. And we are all dependent upon Him. Nitya nityana, chetana chetanana. And that one singular number of nitya, Krishna, bhonam vidudhati kama. So Krishna has provided everyone's food. There is no necessity of becoming anxious. Where is food? Where is food? Every arrangement is there. Our only business is how to develop Krishna consciousness how to know Krishna, and if you simply know Krishna, janma karma me divvam yujana atitakta. Simply, in truth, if we try to understand Krishna, our all problems are solved. Especially this problem, this repetition of birth and death, this is solved. Tapta deham punar janma naiti. And that is the main problem. So our request is 
that everyone may take to Krishna consciousness movement without any hesitation. This is authorized movement and approved movement and people are accepting all over the world. Unfortunately, in India they are lacking. I must admit that as the younger generation from other countries, they are enthusiastically joined or joining. Our Indian youths are not joining in that way. But we require so many preachers, so many young men to preach all over the world the sublime movement Krishna consciousness. People are accepting. Uh, even in Africa, who are supposed to be uncivilized, they are also accepting everywhere. There is no impediment. Ahoyitadhyaprathiyata. People are chanting Hare Krishna mantra. You will be surprised to know that I was going from London to Nairobi, Africa, and our plane stopped for 45 minutes in Athens. And as soon as we dropped down, some young men there in Athens, Greece, they immediately began to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So the Hare Krishna movement is, uh, our Krishna consciousness movement is now well spread all over the world. The framework is there. So anyone can go and preach this Krishna consciousness movement uh, very easily and people will uh, take it. Recently I am coming from Manila. Philippines, they are also, they are dog-eaters. But still they took part in Krishna consciousness movement, chanted, and uh, we are very much encouraged. In the last meeting, we held our meeting in the hotel, a big hall, a very nice hall, and all the young men came and they chanted and danced with us, purchased our books, and uh, here are the organizer. Is Sudama Vitra Goswami Maharaj is present here. He has gone there only six months, and within six months he has organized so nicely that wherever we go, the young generation, especially they chant Hare Krishna. So the purpose is that this Hare Krishna movement has got great potency everywhere, all over the world. Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prithivite Asijato Nagaradhidra. He did not say in vain there was meaning. Simply we have to take the opportunity, the blessings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and try our best. The people will be happy and we shall be happy. That is the meaning of Jiva Satatta Jignasa, Nath Jasti Thank you very much.